ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الكلام كلام الله واحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد We begin in today's session with a study of one of the most popular and the very important text from the Mutun and from the text related to the important science of at-tajweed. And that is the science related to the recitation of the Quran. And not just the recitation of the Quran but the correct recitation of the book of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, the science of Tajweed, ayuh al-ikhwa, it has been serviced throughout the ages, starting, of course, from the era of the companions, Ridwan Allah alayhim, and then continuing up until this very day, that this affair and this science of Tajweed, uh, it is a science that we continue to see the people of knowledge uh, teaching. We continue to see young students of the Qur'an being nurtured upon reciting the Qur'an correctly in accordance with a specific body of rules. And these rules, bi'idhrinillah, we wish to, over the period of the days of Ramadan, look at per day, in the beginning of this session, since this session was, in actuality, the session that we have established for the tafsir of the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. But what we're going to do in the first 20 minutes of this hour per day, we're going to look at the text and the metan known as metan al jazariya or the 106 or 107 lines of poetry that al Imam al Jazari he authored around the most important rules related to rec- reciting the Quran, the rules of tajweed. And there occurs in a narration that is attributed to Ali radiallahu anhu that when he was asked concerning tajweed, what tajweed is uh, and what it is to recite the Qur'an correctly <clears throat> he said tajweed al-huruf wa ma'rifat al-wuquf correcting the huruf, the letters and knowing and being familiar with the stoppages the places with the reciter and the one who recites the Qur'an, where he should stop when he recites the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, whether it is within uh, a verse or upon particular words. And so we, bi'ithin Allah, are going to look at this most uh, important uh, text. And it is a text, Ikhwan, that is advanced in terms of the regular, well-known text, Tuhfatul Atfal. Those of you who may be familiar with the book Tuhfatul Atfal, the book that was authored in essence for the children, some lines of poetry, but they were authored for and in order to be a text for the young reciters of the Quran, for them to be familiar with some of the important rules of Tajweed. Uh, we have bypassed Tuhfa, Tuhfatul Atfal because of the fact that the Ahkam and the rulings that are present within uh, al jazariya are more detailed uh, and thus the one who has already studied Tuhfa 
and many of the rules of tuhfa some of those who haven't actually studied the text may actually be familiar with them even though they haven't studied the text uh, and so we decided to work through al jazariya because of the fact that it includes and comprises the rules that were discussed in tuhfa and it adds to them some very important rules ikhwan and some uh, intricate uh, principles that we need to be familiar with anyone who wishes to recite the Quran correctly. For indeed, the recitation of the Quran correctly, ayyuh al ikhwa, is from the uh, characteristics of those who truly believe in the book. Allah Azza wa Jal has informed us those who we have given them the book, the book those who we have given the book to, yatlunahu haqqa tilawatihi, then they recite it in its correct manner. These are those Allah Azza wa Jal mentions who believe in it. And Allah Azza wa Jal likewise mentions, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنْفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَ يَرْجُونَ تِجَارَةً لَنْ تَبُورٍ Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that indeed those who recite the book of Allah and they establish the salah and they spend from what we have provided for them in secret and in public they seek and they yearn after a, a tijara or a trade uh, and reward that will not be cut off. That is inter- eternal reward, of course, in Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ likewise, as occurs in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, he likewise, he mentions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-mahiru bil-Qur'ani ma'as-safarati al-kiram al-barara. He said that the one who is proficient with the recitation of the book of Allah, then he is with the safarati in kiram barara He is with the angels, those noble, righteous, upright angels that Allah Azawajal has mentioned in the, in the book of Allah Azawajal. And he is with them. Then the Prophet ﷺ, he mentions, وَالَّذِي يَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنُ وَيَتَتَعْتَعُ فِيهِ وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِ شَاقْ لَهُ أَجْرَانِ he said, and the one who recites the Qur'an, وَهُوَ يَتَتَعْتَعْ And he struggles with its recitation. He finds it difficult. And it's hard for him. Then for him, is two rewards. Uh, and so, the beauty of these sessions is that anyone, whether someone who has memorized a large portion of the Qur'an, or has memorized the whole of the book of Allah, or the one who has memorized just a few suwar, and is able to, with some difficulty, read from the uh, the uh, Mus'haf. But he reads slowly. He struggles with his reading. The only thing, Ikhwan, and the only difference between the two of them is practice and consistency. The one who recites the Qur'an proficiently, then how is it and what is it that has made and that has brought him to the position that he is, is, he is in. Nothing, Ikhwan, other than regular recitation of the Qur'an, regular practice. And so these rules, these qawaid and these principles of tajweed, they are principles, brothers and sisters, that when we, as we embark upon them, each set of principles, depending on what they are principles related to, each set of principles oftentimes have categories, subcategories and what have you. And we're going to look at all of them. And we should not look at the task that is before us as a task. Or as something burdensome. Or start to address ourselves that this is difficult. Rather, we should understand that these principles are principles that we should teach our children. And you will see. That when the child is taught these principles of Qira'ah from a young age, the more he recites and memorizes the Qur'an, initially all of those principles may not automatically come back to him or remain with him upon studying Tajweed. If he studies one of the uh, more intricate, more detailed books of Tajweed. He may not remember every single principle automatically, but... As he recites the Qur'an, as he memorizes the Qur'an, he remembers when he sees a'ara 
in the text or in the ayah. He remembers the ahkam related to the ra'at. When he sees a lamb, he remembers the ahkam and the rulings related to lamb. If he sees a harf or a letter that is mufakham or should be recited in a heavy manner, a heavy letter, he remembers and gives it its right. When he sees a letter that should be recited lightly and with tarqiq, he remembers that this is from the huruf of tarqiq and these are from the letters that should be recited lightly. And so even if he makes a mistake upon the initial recitation, he returns his nazar, he returns his view, he recites it again and he recites it better the second time. And the more he recites with the knowledge of the rules, as we mentioned, though he may not make istihdar of all of those principles initially, they may not automatically come to mind initially because some of them, there are a lot of subsections and there are crossovers with some of the rules and there are principles that are implemented here uh, and that are connected to another branch of tajweed. All of these things, we will look at them, Ikhwan, but it is something that you should not look at upon as daunting. Rather, consider it a challenge, an important challenge. A challenge that we need, Ikhwan, because of the fact that we uh, are and should be from the people of the Qur'an and therefore we should be most familiar with the methods of recitation, with how to recite it. And as we are looking at this, this science, it is ab, Ikhwan, it is a uh, great deficiency that there are individuals among the kuffar who are more familiar with the rules and the ahkam of tajweed than we, than some of us. And that is a reality. We have among the non-Muslim, those who are intrigued with the Arabic language, intrigued with the recitation of the Quran, and they are more familiar with some of the rules of tajweed because of them being intrigued with it. They are more familiar with some of the rules of tajweed than we. As believers and as mu'minun, ikhwan. We as believers, we should be at the forefront, and particularly the people of Sunnah. We should be at the forefront of being familiar with these qawaid, with these principles of tajweed. And so, with that being said, we're going to study then the Matan al jazariya uh, And this Matan, ikhwan, was authored by Al-Imam Muhammad, Ibn Muhammad, Ibn Muhammad ibn Ali ibn Yusuf al-Jazari. Uh, and Al-Imam al-Jazari was born in Dimashq uh, in the year 751. Uh, and he was well known, Ikhwan, for his intelligence uh, and for his quick memory and for his astuteness as a young child. He memorized the Quran at the age of 13 uh, and then went on to lead the, the believers, the Muslimun, uh, in Dimashq, in al Jami Al-Amawi, at the age of 14. At the age of 14. At the age of 17, after studying the uh, uh, modes of Qira'ah when he was 15, after memorizing the Quran at 13, by the time he was 15, he had recited and had studied the whole of the Qur'an with all of its modes of recitation. And so he did so afradan. That is to say, he memorized one of the modes of recitation, مثلاً حفظ and عاصم. Then he went on to study warsh and, and, and went over the whole of the Qur'an in warsh And then went on to study with qira'at مثلاً الدوري. Went on to recite with Qira'at ibn Kathir, the Imam, not the Mufassir. The Imam in Qira'ah, not the Imam in Tafsir. Went on to uh, study uh, Qalun. And each time went over the whole of the Quran with each of its modes of recitation. And then he went on by the age of 17 to write some of the most legendary works around uh, Tajweed around the qira'at, around the modes of recitation. By the age of 17, he had compiled a book that gathered some 4,000, 4,000 
of the well-known Qura and the well-known reciters of the Quran. And so he, uh, uh, in the year 774, uh, he became the Imam in Al Jami Al Amawi, the main masjid in Damascus, the main masjid uh, in Damascus, and he was given ijaza and permission to give fatwa by none other than Al Imam Abu Al Fida Ismail ibn Kathir. Al Imam ibn Kathir gave him ijaza and permission to be the mufti within uh, the Jami Al Kabir, yani Al Amawi. Uh, and so within Dimashq, he was from the scholars who gave and from the jurists who gave verdicts. And so he was not only proficient in the science uh, of Tajweed and Qira'at and what have you, uh, but he was likewise uh, a, 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 an individual who was well grounded in uh, the sciences of fiqh and hadith and other than that. He studied with the likes of Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah ta'ala. Uh, uh, alongside others from those who he took from. And so this book then, uh, the book of Imam Al-Jazari, is, as we've mentioned, Ikhwan, from the most popular of the books in terms of uh, Tajweed and possibly has possibly received the most service by the people of knowledge uh, from the books of Tajweed that are well known and popular. It is possibly been the most serviced uh, by the people of knowledge, Rahimahumullah. And so we'll begin then just at least with the muqaddima or with the introduction to the book. Within the introduction, the Imam he mentions, and we mentioned, Ikhwan, there are lines of poetry. He mentions, Yaqulu Raji Afwi Rabbin Sami'i Muhammad ibn al Jazari Shafi'i. الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع مهبه وبعد إن هذه مقدمة فيما على قارئه أن يعلمه إذ واجب عليه محتم قبل الشروع أولا أن يعلموا مخارج الحروف والصفات ليلفظ بأفصح اللغات محرر التجويد والمواقف وما الذي رسم في المصاحف من كل مقطوع وموصول بها وتاء أنثى لم تكن تكتب بها uh, In this مقدمة or this introduction he just mentions that which is connected إخوان, to an overview of the topic and that is that in this muqaddima, he highlights what is going to be present within it. It is matan al jazariya It is referred to as the muqaddima of Jaz al jazariya That is the introductory book or the introductory text of uh, al-Imam al jazari uh, So within it, after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions, وَبَعْدْ إِنَّ هَذِهِ muqaddima He said that indeed this is an introduction. فِيمَا عَلَى قَارِئِهِ يَعْلَمَا for the one or that which is upon or, or highlighting that which is upon the one who recites the Quran, that which is upon him to know. Yani, that anyone who intends on reciting the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, then there is uh, there are a compo- a number of compulsory affairs that one should know. And this statement wad yani is wajibun alayhim muhattamu. Yani that which is compulsory to know, and he mentions it more than once, that it is wajib upon them, and fima al qari an yalama that which should be known by the one who recites the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. This affair of it being wajib, of course, Ikhwan, there is a difference of opinion among the people of knowledge concerning a tajweed. Uh, the uh, term then and the usage of the term here wajib is not wajib in terms of a shara. That is, if one leaves it, or that which the scholars I mention, uh, al-wujub or the wajib, huwa ma yuthabu ala fi'lihi wa yu'aqabu ala tarki, it is that which you are rewarded for doing and you are punished for leaving. 
you are rewarded for doing and punished for leaving. If we're going to say that tajweed is wajib with this definition, yani with the shari'i definition, then it would necessitate that anyone who doesn't know tajweed is under the threat of punishment. And that is not the position of the people of knowledge. But it is binding. It is imperative. The sahaba, when they would recite, of course, ikhwan, the log al-arabiyya, they, they uh, were proficient in the logha just from the, 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 the fact that they were born in the Bia and raised in and among uh, the Arab. Their blood was Arabi. Salikatuhum Salika Arabiya. That they were naturally, naturally uh, in terms of their Arabiya and in terms of that which Allah Azza wa Jal recite or reveal the Quran in and upon, they were naturally speakers of this Arabic. And of course the uh, Arabic language has been distorted over time and, and parts of its reality have become lost even among many uh, of uh, the Arab. And so these sciences were developed in order to maintain and preserve that which is related to the Lugh al Arabiya, for example, the science of Nahu and Sarf and Balagha and what have you. These sciences were developed to preserve that which is connected to the language. Just as the science of Tajweed were sciences that were developed to preserve the manner in which one should recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he said that in it then, is that which is upon the reciter of the Quran to know. For indeed it is binding upon them. Before they start to recite the Quran, firstly to know the application of uh, Tajweed. So he mentions, مخارج الحروف والصفاتي the origins, مخارج الحروف is going to be from the first, in fact it will be the first lesson that we come to uh, بإذنillah in tomorrow's session but it is the origins of the letters, that is the letters that we're reciting in the Quran the letters that this Lugh al is based upon and built upon what are those letters and what are the origins of the letters what is meant by the origins the origins is the place in which those letters emanate from when one recites them <clears throat> where is where are these letters to come from there are letters that begin on the tongue some come from the tip of the tongue some come from and are connected to the roof of the mouth some are related to the nasal cavity some are related to what is known as the jawf which is the opening or the empty vacant space in the mouth and, and into the throat down to the voice box this open area this vacant space is referred to as the jawf and there are letters that are originate in this area and are connected to this area then we have those letters that are connected as we mentioned to the navel cavity cavity to the teeth and the connection of the tongue with the teeth all of these are various types of makharij or origins some of these letters begin in the throat and then there are varying categories of and areas upon the throat itself. There are areas upon the tongue where some of these letters come from. These are known as the makharij of the huruf. And these makharij or these places of the origin of these letters uh, is from the uh, areas that are going to be, we're going to study and we're going to look at. Which is why uh, for, for anyone who really wants to benefit Ikhwan, it would be of interest for them to take and to have a pen and paper there are some letters that we're going to need to record alongside that which is connected to the characteristic of that letter whether it be what what is related to its origin yani its place of origin in the mouth in the throat in the jaw or what have you or what is related to the characteristic of the letter itself which is what he mentions after uh makharij he said makharij al hurufi was sifati after he mentioned the origins of the huruf, he mentioned the sifat, that is, the characteristic of the letter itself. While, yes, we, are, we may be familiar with its origin and where it comes from, where it emanates from, then we also should be familiar with the fact that each letter has a characteristic. That is, characteristics related to the sound of the letter. Whether it is a light letter, whether it is a letter that is to be recited softly or it is to be recited with something of shidda and something of vigor, whether it is heavy in sound 
or it is light in sound, whether it is one that we have uh, the the strong passage and flow and continuation of the breath when one recites it, or the opposite of that, that it stops abrupt, abruptly, depending upon the characteristic of the letter itself uh, and how the letter is to be recited. So that is what is related to the sifat of the harf, which is going to come, and that is going to follow the study of the makharij or the origins of uh, the letters. He likewise mentions muharriri uh, tajweedi wal mawaqifi that one is proficient in tajweed and after the affair of taj what, what he means here by tajweed after the makharij of the huruf and the sifat of the huruf yani the places of the origins of the letters the characteristic of the letter he goes on to discuss that which is related to tajweed generally and that one should be proficient in tajweed and of course when we're looking at tajweed it is not just related to makharij and to sifat there are many other elements and aspects of tajweed that we will look at that which is related to tarqiq mathalan of the huruf and of the letters the usage of the letters the rulings that are related to certain letters being next to others being close and then the rulings that are connected to that which is mathalan huruf that are mutamathilain letters that are similar yani letters that have the same origin and have similar sifat similar characteristics or those letters that are mutajani sain yani those letters that have the same characteristic in that they have the same origin but may have different characteristics in how, how the letter itself is to be recited or that which is related to some of the principles connected to abad, recitation of bad and avwa. These two letters that have rules connected to them, that which is connected to nuna sakina, mathalan, and tanween. The noon that has sukun upon it, and tanween. That which is related to mim as sakina. That which is related to the rulings connected to mim and the letters that it uh, occurs next to. And how that is to be recited. What is connected to the mudud. That is the elongations. The varying categories of elongation. And how they are to be recited. An issue related to lam. The lamat. Lam and how it is to be recited. Depending upon how it falls. The lam that is mathalan. In lafdul jalalati Allah. When it is to be recited. In a heavy manner. And a light manner. And the different types of lam. That which is related to uh, the uh, Hamzat. The varying types of Hamza. And so he mentions then all of these are abwab and issues connected to Tajweed. All of them, inshallah, we'll look at them and the principles related to them. He said, وَمَا, وَمَا فِي الْمَصَاحِفِ He said, likewise, of one before, before that he mentions, Muharriri tajweedi wal mawaqifi. Being proficient in relation to all of these rules of tajweed and the mawaqif from the issues related to tajweed are the wukuf, the stoppages. When is it permissible to stop? What is per a permissible stoppage? What is a compulsory stoppage? When is it not permissible, impermissible to stop? When may it be even considered kufr if a person intentionally stopped uh, in a particular manner? All of these things we will look at bi'idhnillah. And then he mentions, وَمَا الَّذِي رُسِّمَ فِي الْمَصَاحِفِ Likewise, the affair of the rasam that is connected to the mushaf. Yani, the manner in which certain things are written in the mushaf, those manners may differ from that which is connected to the uh, writing of a particular letter or of a particular word outside of the Mus'haf. And this writing had to be in accordance with the Rasm al-Uthmani. The Rasm al-Uthmani, ayyuh al ikhwaz you are and may be familiar, that Uthman radiallahu anhu, uh, after the Qur'an, as you well know, was revealed in Sab'ati uh, Ahruf, it was revealed in seven dialects. When those dialects, ikhwan, uh, the... the 
uh, Muslimun began to differ concerning those dialects to the extent that blood was spilt over the recitation of the Quran in its and upon its certain dialects. Uthman radiallahu anhu, and it is from the manaqib and from the uh, the praiseworthy characteristics of Uthman, <clears throat> is that he had the modes of recitation other than the one Qurashi mode of recitation. He had those modes of recitation abolished. And we'll look at that when we come to its chapter. He had them abolished. And then he uh, established the Quran upon one mode of recitation. And that was the mode of recitation that initially came to the Prophet Sallam. Yani the one dialect of Quraysh. Uh, he then <clears throat> sent, after establishing the one Mus'haf that is in accordance with the mode of Quraysh, he sent that Mus'haf to be copied in the various region, regions around the uh, is Islamic lands and the Islamic state. And this Mus'haf was known as uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, Mus'haf al-Uthmani or the Mus'haf that was established by Uthman radiallahu anhu uh, that was taken from the Um, the main Mus'haf uh, that was in the position of Hafsa, Hafsa radiallahu anha. Uh, and so, ultimately, the writing that is present within our Mus'haf, it must accord with what was in the Mus'haf al-Uthmani, the Rasm al-Uthmani. What was in the Mus'haf of Uthman and how were those words written? And so you'll find then that certain words are written in the Qur'an, ordinarily in the Arabic language, outside of the Qur'an, they will be written in a slightly different manner. And so he, in this re relation, he indicates and points towards that here when he says, For example, we have some things that are added that are not present in the, uh, or in the uh, ordinary Arabic outside of the Mus'haf. And we have some things that are removed that may be present within uh, the Mus'haf. For example, uh, we find Alif, مثلاً, in some uh, words with the Jam al Mudakar as Salim, you'll find Alif if one was to recite Alameen. Alameen, there would be Ain followed by an Alif. But in the Mus'haf, you'll find that is removed, that the Ain is connected to the Lam, and there is just a small line that is present after or on top of the Ain to the, to the left of the Ain, a small line resembling a small Alif. What but the actual alif connected to the ayn alameen it is removed. Why is that? And that continues to be the case to this day. Why is that? It is important to be familiar with that. This is from the Rasm al Uthmani. This is from the manner in which it was present within the Rasm al Uthmani uh, that we uh, continue to have to this day. And that manner of writing must be retained. It is not permissible now for us to change that which was in the Rasm al-Uthmani. So this section familiarizes us with the manner in which certain letters are recited. And then the Imam, uh, he goes on to mention, min kulli maktu'in wa mawsulin biha. Every letter that he is, has been cut off or disconnected. And mawsulin biha. Yani and joined yeah, any that may not ordinarily be joined outside of the mushaf and then he mentions wata untha lam takun tuktab biha and the ta al untha or the ta at ta'nith or the feminine ta was not written with this ha and what is written here what is intended here is the ha that ta known as ta al marbuta that in the masahif, that then you have an open ta, and not the ta marbuta, the ta that resembles ha with the two dots on the top. These are all uh, uh, issues, Ikhwan, that he mentions in his, in, in his introductory statement to highlight the fact that everything that we're going to look at, everything that we're going to discuss, all of this revolves around uh, this science, this important science that we should be familiar with. Uh, and thus that then is how he introduces his book. And so we'll get straight into the, f the first 
chapter in tomorrow's session. Bi'idhnillah. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina 